Well, I was just looking at some charts. I was thinking about how, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> of course, right when I have to go to talk on a video, I, I can't speak or burp. Rahu in the second house. <laughs> oh, man. I am not the best at speaking. You guys will have to forgive me for that. When I make a video about my chart, you'll get to analyze it on your own. That's on my list of things to do. Give me less than a month and I'll have a video up about my own chart or analyze my own chart with all the different techniques that I know. It might be a long one, uh, but that's something that I've been planning to do for like half a year. Um, I know some of the people that I really respect, uh, one astrologer who I really, really respect just made a video about why you shouldn't give out your birth data. Uh, but I had already been planning to do this, and so I've got to stick to my guns because I feel why I feel there's a reason. I feel that I should give out my birth data if I'm going to be an astrologer and I'm going to analyze other charts. That why don't people analyze me? Sure, I'm open to it. I'm fine with it. And uh, yeah, I I'd be really really impressed actually if someone could. Could, could manipulate me or mess with me from my birth chart. That'd be impressive and I'd probably appreciate that karmic entanglement. Moving forward. Uh, just thinking about, just thinking about Jupiter. And in my last video I was talking about Jupiter is the, is a planet that's all about the fulfillment of life and the goodness of life that can come from within. And he's also about like, bringing that from within out of you, you know? So he rules creativity, which is like a, a, an inner spark that comes, that you bring forth, you know what I mean? And he rules children and he rules wisdom and things. So these are all things that give us fulfillment from within. But I also didn't add that it also has to do with things just like virtue flowing through you is also about Jupiter and goodness flowing through you and sattva flowing through you, we could say. And then I talked about for briefly and uh, about how Venus has to do with more like the fulfillment that we get externally from external things. So one of the toughest placements you can have is Venus and Jupiter conjunct. Actually, this is a really, really tough place when you can have and in Western astrology, they like this placement a lot. They talk about how nice it is. So, I'm here to give you the Vedic perspective because it's, it's more of a blessing and a curse. It's more of a mixed bag from the Vedic perspective. I probably should have mentioned this when I did that interview with Carmina a week ago about Western Vedic astrology, but it slipped my mind then, but this is, uh, hopefully this will help you, especially if you've only come from a Western astrology background. Okay. Okay. So these are some chart examples of, Jupiter and Venus conjunct. Venus gets delighted when it's with Jupiter because any planet that's with Jupiter is in the mudita vashta, the delight of vashta, state of feeling good because Jupiter represents uh, divine grace and things working out. So when Venus is there, in, that's sort of good from a Venus standpoint, but it's actually bad from a Jupiter standpoint because Venus is Jupiter's enemy in the Lachitadi of Ashtas. You'll have to study that more in depth, but this is why to understand all of that, but this is one of the main ways that that works. So this is some chart examples of Venus and Jupiter, the starvation and delight. So this is sort of a blessing and a curse. Okay. This chart is Bill Clinton's chart. He was the president of the United States of America. Um, more intelligent than most presidents and people, in my opinion, when I've listened to him speak. Uh, he's got a good son there, you know, and he's got a lot of good 11th house stuff and all. So he was good for balancing the budget and everything. Um, but his, uh, his ethics are complete shit. <laughs> I'm just going to say it. You know what I mean? And I, I, I think he's, he did a better job as a president than a lot of them. But uh, when we look at him, you see, Jupiter is the planet of doing good and, ha and finding happiness within yourself, but it's in a great enemy dignity here. So he can't find happiness within himself very easily. Venus is in a proud dignity, and Venus is delighted by Jupiter, so Venus is super strong. So for him 
it was it's not easy to find fulfillment inwardly it's only easy to find fulfillment externally through external things through uh luxury through money through cars through uh positions in the world being a politician you know through women so we all know how he he's very well known for his affair with uh, monica lewinsky and all that and he's kind of really well known as a womanizer, like just in the, you know, in pop culture, in the insider world, in the Hollywood world. Everyone knows that he's a uh, little, you know, that those are where his issues are, let's say. Okay. And we can see that right away because of this Jupiter and Venus conjunct. Um, all right, so next I'll leave this alone for now. Move on to the next one. Okay, this is mystery person number four. I don't, this is just a local person that I know. I'm not trying to uh, reveal their information. But this person has a little bit of a more confusing thing. He's also got Venus and Jupiter and Lyra. He's got these two other plants here. That does complicate it. There's a lot of ashes going on here. But still, we have Jupiter delighting Venus. Venus starving Jupiter pretty strongly. And this person will will really admit it, you know, uh, at least candidly, that he's overly too materialistic and he doesn't find happiness in himself. He doesn't, he can't just go take a hike and be in nature. That would make him really miserable. He can't just hang out at the beach and do nothing or read a book or anything like that. That's just not his way of being happy. He loves entertainment. He loves stimulation. He he knows everything about like every television show, every music, just every, the entire ent entertainment world. He's incredibly knowledgeable because again, Jupiter is like a storehouse of information. Um, but he is a very materialistic person that doesn't find it easy to find joy in the spirit or in um, spiritual things or in uh, the invisible side of life or in his creativity coming through him. It's more about finding fulfillment in the world through things, through people, through, through uh, just all kinds of ephemeral things. He also interestingly has like quite a foot shoe thing. He has a shoe fetish, we might say, where he has uh, way more shoes than, than the average person. He's like one of those people who has like closets of shoes. He's not exactly a sneaker head, but he's sort of been connected to that at times, but He's like one of those people who like collects all the Nike dunks or something, except he's not, it's not about Nike dunks for him or anything, but he is a collector of things in many, many ways. And he's all about the highest quality clothing, but it gets to the point of being like a pathology. Um, and yeah, he gets a little too overboard with it. And so we can see that this Venus and Jupiter thing going on here that's connected to it. So for him to be happy, we'd really want to strengthen Jupiter. And there's a lot of things we could do with that. Um, I'm not really going to go into all that in this one. But, you know, if he was to get a reading from me, I'd, I would have a lot of things that I would that I would tell him to do. But it's kind of more personal. And that all depends on the rest of the chart, too, the way that I do remedies. But he would, we would want to strengthen this Jupiter. Um, all right, yeah, so it's good for that one. This is the chart of Alexander the Great. First off, it's really cool how in India people have a saying for like someone who takes charge of their own destiny and who just makes things happen, they're considered to be an Alexander. Like they say like, oh, that he's a real Alexander. He just went for it. You know what I mean? That's because Alexander the Great was the only person to even get close to conquering India. <laughs> It's so big and vast, he didn't succeed either, but he was the only person to get remotely close. And uh, there's a really cool story about that, actually, where uh, Alexander the Great encountered a yogi called Dandamus, or Dandamus. I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but the story of that is in the book Autobiography of a Yogi. It's profoundly amazing. One of the coolest stories I've ever read in my entire life is the encounter of Alexander the Great when he had his people go and fetch yogis because he was obsessed with yogis and he had them like give some Q and A, some back and forth questions. And the yogis, the, this yogi just like 
shattered him with <laughs> the, him, the answers with his uh, wisdom and really put things in place for him. And there's also a really secret, a really amazing secret clue about the Zodiac. And the, in my opinion, the correct Zodiac is in, given in that story. And that story goes from an old history book, but Yogananda uh, shared it in his, in his autobiography of a yogi as well. If you want, I can let me know in the comments if you want me to send you a link to that or something. But Alexander the Great, he has, his, he has it with K2 here. So he had a destined past life thing. And Rahu is on the ascendant of like, it's all about you manifesting yourself. Obviously, if you're going to be the conqueror of the world, then yeah, <laughs> your life's about you more than about other people. But we can see here that he needed, he desperately needed to have this. He couldn't find fulfillment from within himself with Venus conjunct Jupiter. So he couldn't have been a yogi, really. His life wasn't really for that. His life was meant to be getting fulfillment, finding his inner happiness through Venus, through which is externals. And Venus represents the world. It's in the seventh house of the public and the world and foreign nations. So, and K2, you know, makes us like obsessive and controlling and myopic. So he wanted to control the world, you know, he wanted to dominate the whole world and he couldn't be happy with that. And he couldn't be happy even when he did control the whole world is what the chart says. So even if, well, he did, he did get to that point and he, it's true. He didn't get enlightened. He didn't get happier or anything. Um, and that actually wasn't even like his life started going downhill almost after that point. There's a lot more that could be said about Alexander the Great, but I'm going to have to leave it at that for now. But it's just really funny that he would have the same Jupiter-Venus conjunction of mixing up your inner fulfillment and your outer fulfillment. And getting those mixed up can cause a lot of trouble. Mm, this is mystery person number three. Oh yeah, this is just a client that came to me and was just obsessed with money and getting more money and just like couldn't get, didn't, didn't want to hear anything else. That's the other funny thing is with this placement, the person won't, may not really be into philosophy or actually working on themselves because again, that's an inner development thing. They're not interested in that unless Jupiter is in good dignity, exalted or in good dignity. Um, here we have both of them in bad dignity. We have Venus debilitated, Jupiter in uh, enemy dignity. And so this person just had a lot of the more lower qualities that um, even if I did predict a time for him to get money, it, I don't think it would have made him happier or changed his life in any way. He didn't want to know the meaning of why he was suffering, which is more important. He didn't want to have any understanding. He just wanted to know, like, will I make money with this thing? And why not? And why can't I? And what can you do to make it happen? And yeah. So one of the least fun readings I've done in my whole career. Um, and uh, I probably wouldn't have even done it if I didn't have to, but um, I needed the money and I wanted to help him and things. And I tried, but I don't think he was open to it. But that did my part, you know what I mean? But I guess we should assume that when both of the Brahmin planets are in really bad dignity, you know, those are the planets of astrologers and being a receptive to astrology and that type of information. So uh, he wasn't because they were debilitated in the eighth house, bad dignity. So even if he got more money, it would just cause more problems, honestly, in my opinion. Um, okay, so moving on to the next one. All right, and so this is a person who I know personally. And they have... Uh, Jupiter and Venus conjunct and with Rahu, which makes it even worse and more challenging. But yeah, they have Jupiter and Venus conjunct and the person just has struggled a lot with, with yeah, with uh, being, not being able to be fulfilled with either internal or external things really because of the Rahu there. So this kind of makes it a little bit more complicated. Uh, for this one, but they've had the same situation where they're like, but this person actually considers them to be a, considers themselves to be a very spiritual person, but then won't work on themselves. Like they won't do anything to try to get that, to try to have that feeling of spirit moving through them, or they won't try to do anything even externally um, to try to feel like God, like they can connect to God outside of them either. And 
So yeah, that's also kind of a tough, a tough placement and the person, um, Well, I'll just leave it at that. But I, what I will say is that the, for a female, it can be tough because you can attract men that are like that. So you may not be that much like that, but the men you attract are like that, which is equally as frustrating and, cha and annoying to find a man who, because your man is supposed to be Jupiter, which is a straightened up man who like knows his facts of life and the truth of life and the, and the big picture and can help guide you through that. Jupiter Venus, especially Jupiter Rahu Venus, means you attract a man who's not even if they're the best at that, your karma, you just won't get it. You won't hear it, whatever. It's not going to be that easy. Um, and the person themselves, that's because with Rahu there, the person themselves has to develop these qualities. But this person's just not interested in that. Probably also because Mars is starved on the ascendant. And when Mars is really weak, you're not willing to develop your character or your strength of character. And that Rahu's lord is Mars. And so that Rahu's acting like a bad dignity Mars as well. So... Not, a lot, not enough hunger or desire to make things, make the transformation happen there. Okay, uh, I think that's all of the ones that I wanted to look at. Um, anyways, all right, so that's, that's the basic, um, that's the gist of it. So um, I hope these examples help you to kind of understand more of the Jupiter-Venus conjunction. It's a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing if you are just wanting to have your desires fulfilled. You want money, you want women, you want nice cars. Jupiter Venus will, will make that happen, but it's a curse because eventually you'll learn that happiness is really not about external things and happiness is an inside job. And that's Jupiter's role is to determine that. And so that's a very tough thing. So people that have this is a classic placement if it's in the first, second, or seventh, especially, um, to have, if you're a man, to have like lots of sex with lots of women. But the more you do it, the more and more you're just lost and unfulfilled. Um, and that actually, that was also the case with one of the people, the local guy that I said that was a, you know, too materialistic. And he went for, a, you know, spent a long time just like wasting a lot of time just trying to date different people and then, just was just really too superficial about it all and like write off people for no reason or this or that or whatever and um it's a placement that makes it hard to find fulfillment and happiness even though you can have all these things handed to you that seem like they're like that they almost confuse you more and distract you more from real happiness so it is a tough placement to have um, but it also helps you for worldly fulfillment, which we all need, and so that's nice too. So it is kind of it's kind of a blessing and a curse in many ways, but it's by no means a universally good conjunction, which is what Western astrology says. Western astrology thinks that is just a classic great conjunction. I remember when I was first learning it, I was looking at this girl's chart that I had a crush on. It's like, oh man, this is like the best place ever. And she ended up being a girl. I was just way too promiscuous, not the type of girl I should have been interested in at all. I I don't think she's in, I can't say she's in a really great place in her life now, 10 years later, you know what I mean? Um, I think she was a lot luckier then. Her looks have been fading, you know? Uh, you, you know, uh, you get to a point where that stuff's not working for you anymore. And so that's when things really suck and get tough and they need to go to an astrologer, a therapist or someone to help them through that and to help them break these old, old habits of thinking that, just having another man or having more sex is going to make you happier. It's not. Okay. Not that I've not gotten caught up in that. We all have, you know, um, you don't have to have this placement to have that, but this is a very extreme version of it where it's like you're in this life. You're meant to have this good karmic reward, but then realize that's not as good as you thought maybe or something. So it's a very big lesson to be learned when Venus and Jupiter are conjunct. It may not be with women, it may be with money, but it may be with some external thing that 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 the person desires. And if they're if you're watching this and you see that, then take time to develop that Jupiter and think, is that really what's gonna make me happy? Or can I just become happy now? Can I just decide to become happy now? And what can I do to be more happy inwardly? Those are that's a good uh, good like approach. That's a good way to deal with this. Okay. Thanks, you guys.